Alrighty then, so I've done seven rows of the cotton in a thickness of four. And you can see it's created quite a sort of nice basket weave uh, kind of pattern. Um, so now just go on back to the same old, same old. I'm trimming a tail so I can tuck it back in between the row I just completed and the previous row. So I'll just do that. Just gonna tuck all of those behind voila, and push push down. And this is actually quite loose, so I'm going to kind of compact it down quite a bit. And that really secures it. So even though it feels like we sort of used a lot of yarn to uh, create these seven rows, it actually hasn't amounted to much after we've done that pushing. So give it a nice little push, and then we're going to create our next row of clouds or bank of clouds is even a better description here so you can see in this work this is the seven rows although to look at it you wouldn't think it is but trust me you have just done these seven rows and as we pushed down it's kind of almost disappeared in the work but um, it's created enough sort of definition for there to you know for there to be a nice design I suppose um, so we're not going straight into the bank of clouds though, we're actually going to do our little embellishments um, using our top. So we're going to be doing some mini rhinots and we're going to get a shorter length um, by wrapping around our fringes. So I'll just pull back the wall hang. We're doing this and then we're going to add the clouds. So this is the little fuzzy wuzzies we're adding now. And what we need for this is um, six. So six bundles of rhinots, and they're only going to be a thickness of two, and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to be wrapping around three of my fingers, and that's probably even going to be a bit long for what we need, so we might even need to trim them. If you are a little child, um, you might want to use four fingers. If you're a big, super burly bloke, you might want to use two fingers. So, you know, use your common sense about how um, many fingers you use but I'm using my lady's fingers which is three and um, I'm just going around oh, three three or four times just to kind of, kind of give you an example so actually I'll do that so I think I went around four times and that's given me two of the bundles that I'm referring to that we need so we need a total of five doubles like so so i'll just put those two down and then i'll just go ahead and count the rest that we need so it's 10 in total that we need so i've done four so i need six more and don't cut yourself people seriously so i've got i've just left myself one short just measure it here and essentially we're creating like a little pyramid shape with three two and then one on the top so six bundles of two is what we need so let us just place this here let us begin so just so we can both orient ourselves in the same um, direction the bundles are going to be on the right hand side of the loom so this side and we're going to go start two in this is what I mean little heddles popped down so we're going to just leave these two and start here so I'm going to grab my first two and essentially we're just doing the rhinot but it's a shorter one. So I'm isolating these first two warp threads and popping each side of this little mini bundle through and pulling down. Voila! Can you see? Can you see? Okay, so I'm just going to do a total of three on this row. So once again, raya, 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 pulling down, number three, 
Raya, Raya, pants on fire. Okay, so that's our first little row of shaggy Raya pom pommy effect. Then we're going to place two on top. So, as I mentioned in that kind of triangular configuration or pyramid configura configuration, we're just going to go in to these two. So we're going to skip this first one and go on top here. Okay, so we can see the little pom pom effect building. Then for our last one, we just want to top it off nicely by going in between the two. So these are the two, this is the space in between, and then we're just going to sit it on top of there. And there we have it. Oh, God, I thought we'd never get there. Okay, fabulous. So that's sitting on top of the seven rows of the cotton that we did. So we can kind of trim these a bit later if we feel like they're kind of sticking out too much, you know. They may or may not, but you may like it. It's entirely personal. Okay, now we're going to do the clouds on top. So because the roving is really nice and sort of malleable and forgiving, um, it doesn't matter that we've got this kind of quite big discrepancy of height here. We'll essentially just be kind of putting our clouds here and our clouds here and a little bit over the top and it will all still kind of look nice and even. So we're going to grab that other quarter thickness that we created before and essentially replicate what we did for this row below. So once again, just using our fingers, gently feed through. And I'm going to go over the top of this little triangle and all the way to the end, like so. Then I'm just pulling through the clouds. So just pull through the clouds, pull through the clouds. I might leave this one just so there's a, a little bit of um, adjustment made for the height differentiation. So I don't want to cover everything I'm doing with my hands. Pull through pull through, pull through, I've got my first little ones, and my tail once again, tuck it back in, but instead of pulling right at the edge there, we've got an opportunity to make another little bobble, oh, I might just shove that all behind, love a bit of a shove, coming back around the other way, and being quite gentle with how I handle it because, as I mentioned before, it's a delicate-ish material. shove behind okay voila now if you you've got more roving to play with so if you want to you can add another row it doesn't really matter if you kind of really want to sort of amp up that element of the work um but essentially we've created those two cloud banks i love that term for the roving um and we've got our little uh feature sitting above our, our tail feature sitting above our teal looped rye knot so it's really starting to come together in a lovely way now we're going back to old mate 
um, the light grey torpy bugger that we've used quite a, quite a bit of. And we're going to do, referring to my notes, 10 rows of this, um, just in single thickness. So 10 rows can be kind of long, um, a bit kind of long and arduous to handle. So if you don't feel completely confident, you can, in chopping, in measuring 10 rows without getting tangled, then you can just do five rows at a time. So do five rows, tuck it, you know, measure five rows, weave, tuck in the edges, and then repeat the process to get a total of 10. Um, but I'm happy to do 10 because, you know, I've been weaving a while now, this freeform weaving style. So I'm just going to measure 10 across. One, two, three, four, five. This is where you'd stop if you want to do two lots of five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bit extra. Grab my needle. Oh. Oh, look, here's some scraps. Delicious, delicious scraps, which I make my baskets from. Oh, what, what do the baskets look like? You say, well, funny you should ask. I've got one right here. <laughs> yeah, so I turn all of my scraps into baskets. Yep, I'm really that special. Okay. And we're just going, going for it. So another great opportunity to really get the hang of that plain weave and to master that technique. Tucking, pushing down, yada, yada, yada. Look, guys, 10 rows. Okay, uh, so just going to finish that off. I know you know what I'm doing here because you're brilliant by now. All right. Um, and I'm just going to just do a little gentle push down. It doesn't really need too much. Um, maybe just fluff up that little section a bit. Um, it behaves quite nicely this yarn, which is one of the reason I've, reasons I've chosen it for this uh, project. Okay, so now we're going to be doing just two more sections. So we can see here, we've just done the 10 rows of the top. Now we're going to be doing five rows of the teal and then five rows of the grey, which is this grey that was in a ball, as opposed to this grey, which is in a skein. But you know what? If you mix them up, it doesn't really matter. There's plenty. Okay, so five of the teal. So one, two, three, four, five. I might keep the camera rolling for this. Why not? God, my generosity. It's incredible. So I'll be weaving with you, but I'm going to just be weaving down on my loom like so. So you guys by now should really have this down pat. Commencing my fourth. Just going to re-thread my cheeky needle. Get to this point I do a tuck and kind of shove behind as you will probably have seen okay and then the next bank is the gray from the ball as opposed to the skein and single thickness as well so one two three four five rows of that 
scrap. Delicious, precious scrap. And I'll be doing basket tutorials as well. Now, as you are completing these last two sections, you will see that we have not gone all the way to the top of the loom. So if you want to, you can add some more rows. Um, you'll have plenty of leftover material to play with. You can even do some of the more short rye knots if you like. And let's not forget we're going to be adding that pom-pom too. Okay, so that's me done on my two lots of five rows. And just, just a gentle push down is all we need. So what we want to keep in mind as we have finished off our work is that it's nice and even because we're going to be adding a stick to the top of this. So once we tie everything off, we want it to be even enough so that when our stick goes on top, it's nice and straight as well. It's got a little tail sneakily sticking out there. Pop back in, my dear. Pop back in. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So if you want to, as I mentioned, continue to build, you know, you've got about that much more. There's no need to really go right to the top. You can if you like, but it's very tight trying to weave up there. Also, once you kind of start hitting this area, you might find the heddle is, uh, becomes more of a hindrance than a help. So you can always remove it anytime you need. And what I find is by the time we sort of get to this point anyway, the warp threads have loosened up. So it's actually not difficult to kind of get, get around them with the needle. You know, it's very easy to, to scoop under them, she says. And I'm doing this like back the front, so you know, bear with me, peeps. Um, okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is the pom pom, and that's just fun. Okay, pom poms. A pom pom is a super super simple thing to make, and I've provided a uh, fluffy, thicker grey skein in here to make your pom pom with. So that's what this twisted up bit is for. However, you can use anything else. You know, if you want to make your pom-pom out of this one, you can. But it's just a bit thin. Um, and this kind of makes a quicker, easier pom-pom, in my humble opinion. Also, you'll have a little bit of the teal left over. So you can actually mix the colours up if you so desire. Or you can just do one colour. Um, and people have many different approaches to pom-poms. I always like the path of least resistance, personally. And I don't feel like there's any need for any kind of ridiculous apparatus or anything. You can just use your hands. So there are a million pom-pom tutorials on YouTube and everyone's got a different way. And I'm like, why make it hard, people? Okay, so I'm a three-finger girl. That sounds interesting, but I mean nothing by that. Um, if you're a big burly bloke, just use two fingers. If you're a child, use four. But three is fine for this, the purpose of this project and we are just wrapping around so we want to wrap around at least 60 times if you're a counter I'm not I'm just an intuitive creator either to my benefit or my det detriment I don't really know but we're essentially just going around until we've got a nice big chunky bundle and when in doubt you can just use this whole skein that I've created or provided for you um, and that'll give you a really big voluptuous pom pom so I'm going to I've got a little bit of yarn that I'm going to wrap around the middle so this is my pom pom which I'm just now easing off my fingers and you see it all stays together pretty pretty easily 
So that's where my fingers were and I'm going to tie around the center like so. Just kind of pushing it over the top and bringing it around the other side. So like so. And I think there's two kind of secrets to a decent pom-pom. One is tying this middle bit nice and tight because the tighter that you tie it, the more the yarn splays uh, open and kind of stands out at an angle that um, helps with that circular shape you're trying to achieve. Okay, and I've just pulled it tight and I've kind of wrapped it around the other side so I don't sort of lose that tightness. But if you need someone to help you, and we'll do a double knot just so that doesn't come loose, um, you know, by all means get someone to help you. Okay, so we want to keep these two bits separate and not accidentally chop these because we're going to be using these uh, to tie on to our wall hanging. So I'm just kind of going to hold my pom-pom like so with these, the bundle on top and then the two yarny bits hanging down. And I'm getting my scissors. And I'm, where are you, camera? Where is it? I've got my sense of direction. Hello. And then I'm just going through and I'm cutting through all those folded loopy bits like so. So I'll just pull back so I can see what I'm doing a bit better. I mentioned there was two key things. So the first one is tying that first section nice and tight. The second one is to give it a really good haircut because as you will quite clearly see when I do my pom-pom and when you do your pom-pom is that it looks like a bit of a dog's breakfast. I'm just going through and checking for any loops that I've missed. Okay, I think I've got them all. All right, so a bit of a shake, 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 lately. And that's what it looks like. So it just looks terrible, but we just give it a haircut. So we just make sure. I'm just sort of holding it like so with these bits that we're going to use to tie onto the loom. And then I'm just going around and giving it a haircut. And I suppose it's like chopping your fringe. You don't just go hell for leather. You kind of do little bits at a time. Some people make wall hangings that are all pom-poms and they look quite cute. So, you know, if you're a crafty, projecty kind of person, now that you've got this sort of basic weaving down pat, which I'm sure you are by the end of this video, then you can really kind of start thinking about other little projects, other things you can incorporate into your weave, like beads or shells, you know, if you want to something to look a bit beachy you can hang your wall hanging off a piece of driftwood you know the world is your weaving oyster shall we say all right so that's what i would consider a very quick pom-pom trim oh look i can't stop see it's addictive okay so i'm just going to leave it there so that's essentially my pom-pom and that's good enough for me except for that one bit there sticking out okay so we've got all this like nice little pom-pom dusty stuff which are get out of my way okay a bringing in the star of the show and we are going to what side's it on it's on this side we're going to tie the pom-pom onto the top that's another way with it so you can continue trimming to your heart's content it doesn't matter until you you know want your perfect little pom-pom but that's fine for me and we're going to the third warp thread in. Yes. Actually, no, we're going to the fourth. I think that's better. So I'm going to the fourth warp thread. One, two, three, four. And I am looping one of these strings through so that I can tie a double knot. So that's my first knot. And I'm kind of pulling it down as well so it sort of hits the top of the weaving. And then I'm tying another knot so it doesn't come undone. Oh, and then I'm trimming. Voila. So that's a big buffy pom-pom. So probably in an ideal world, I would have made that a bit smaller. So 
um, you know, from a compositional and proportional point of view, it would not dominate the rest of the wall hanging. The other thing that we just want to have a look at at this point are our little um, fringy Ryanot pieces. So, and they're a little bit uneven. So I'm just going to just give them just a little trim. Just they don't, so they don't stick out too much. So really, I've just kind of taken a small amount like that off, give everything a shake. So you can see that's just a little bit more kind of elegantly tufty, shall we say. Okay, so that's it. We've completed the wall hanging. And now all we have to do is take it off the loom, which is totes exciting. Are you ready, peeps? Okay, a potentially terrifying yet very rewarding moment for us all is removing our wall hanging from the loom and we're chopping it off baby so get ready to rock and roll. So we're going to turn it to the back and halfway across the loom we're just chopping those wall threads. You see how I just went straight in, I didn't even hesitate, nothing happened, everything stays in place. I chopped through that diagonal piece, I kind of ignored it. I'll just kind of pull that longish tied bit off. I might just trim that so it's the same size and voila. So what we do now, and you're going to do this on the table in front of you like this because it's a lot easier, but I'll show you what we're doing. So we're going to get the first two um, threads and just pull them gently out of the notches and then tie a double knot underneath. And you'll feel it hit that header that we wove at the very beginning, stopping the knots. So you just basically just tie gently until you reach or you feel that resistance. Then we go to the next two across. Tie a double knot. It's very important that you just leave it for this bottom row, you leave the warp threads in the notches because if you let them come out, they're going to get mixed up with the fringe and you won't be able to identify them. You'll lose them and that'll be a bit of a kerfuffle. So I'm doing the next two across. This is such an unsightly angle for this poor little wall hanging. I feel like I'm looking up its dress or something. Next to Last two. Eh. I just can't see what I'm doing, so I'm just going to pull that up. Lay out the last two for that final knot. Okay, so now that we've done the bottom, we can actually gently ease these threads out of the top notches so you can see some fell away anyway and I'm laying it out in front of me like so so I'm laying it nice and flat and what I have got in front of me are all of the warp threads heading towards me and I will get you to do the same so if I just hold it up and show you what we're doing now is we're tying another double knot on top of the last row that we completed so you can do this down on the table but I'm just sort of lifting it up a bit so that you can see what I'm doing I'm not tying really tightly I'm just tying until I feel it hit the top the top of the row so like so like so and so on and so forth. I'm assuming you kind of get it at this point. So I'm just going to quickly finish these off. And you can pause if you need to kind of concentrate on yours. 
and where you've got the pom-pom obviously you just kind of feel your way and have a little peek under the pom-pom if you need to to make sure you're grabbing the right warp threads there's no winners okay and that means it's all nice and secure and we can throw it around now if we want to and there we have our adorable little wall hanging with completely oversized pom-poms so you know in an ideal world I'd trim that down a bit more um, so if we compare it to the sample one it's a little bit smaller just ever so slightly smaller because i think i've just used a tiny bit less roving so if you want to amp up the roving element on both of those banks of roving you're more than welcome also in this one i haven't trimmed and i think it could probably benefit from, from a little trim and you can see the size difference in the pom-poms as well i went a bit ott today um, and i can just kind of continue to give that a little trim if i desire um Although ideally you wouldn't trim it while it's still on the wall hanging, but you know, I'm a, I'm a professional, I can do anything I want. Okay, so last but not least, we're going to use our little stick as our hangy, hangy guy. And what I do here is I basically just slip my stick between each of the tied off groups so that there's a warp thread at the front, one at the front and one at the back. So you can see here's the back. And here's the front and that means that I can tie another double knot on top of the stick and I shall commence that immediately and I am actually being mindful of tying it literally on top of the stick so I've made sure the knot does actually sit on this little top surface of the stick here. Another tip is to do one end first and then go to the opposite end and tie that off. And then you can fill in the middle. So I've tied this end and this end and now I'm going to tie off the middle. I feel like we need kind of dramatic, rousing, crescendo music. So just imagine a dramatic symphony in your head right now as we come to the close of our weaving tutorial and finishing off our fabulous little wall hanging. It's a dear little thing. Cool, okay, so we've sticked it. We've tied the top, we've tied the bottom, we've tied our stick on, and now all we need to do to create that little fan at the top is to tie a little bit of yarn around here. So I've just grouped them all together and bundled them all together. I'm gonna to tie a bit of yarn. I just happen to have this right next to me, but you can choose any color you like, just a short bit. You can see I've tied like so. I'm gonna do a double knot so it doesn't come undone. And then you can tie that into a bow if you like, or just trim trim it the same size as the little bits sticking out the top. But look, how adorable is that? And we're done, we're done, baby. You're weavers now, so congratulations. Thank you for watching. I welcome your feedback. Please comment below, subscribe, hit the bell, look up my website share the love, do all the usual things that you're meant to do if you like someone on YouTube. This is my uh, living, so any feedback is hugely appreciated and I enjoyed spending this time with you. Thank you.